Hi there, Robin here from Expert On, and today we're going to be doing some more Q&A. So I'm going to be answering your questions and comments that you've posted on the actual YouTube channel. Uh, we'll start right off with uh, Brian, who uh, makes a uh, comment about the JBL Eon 612 versus TS312. He likes the video, thank you very much, and he likes the content. But the portion where I do the comparisons between the two speakers thinks I got it wrong and you know what I can see where he's going with that because I did all the JBL and then all the alto speaker instead of going back and forth between the two uh, song by song so uh, that's a good point I think that's the way I do it now I try and you know alternate between the two a little bit more and use less songs back then I was trying to accommodate everybody when it came to style of music uh, now I just kind of narrow it down to something that's gonna make the speaker sound good and come across really well but I appreciate the comment. It's, uh, it's a good point. And uh, I think if you see some of our newer videos, they're better suited for you. But thank you again for watching the video and thank you for rewinding back and forth. So next question from Quinn has also to do with the fact that I do compare and you know recommend one speaker over another speaker. And uh, this is a tough one because of course, you know he's talking about the ZLX 15P and he's also talking about the Eon 615. And it's real hard. At the end of the day, if everybody had the exact same taste and was trying to do the exact same job, uh, we'd only need one speaker. But that's not the way the world is. And features are really what defines everybody. Everybody's trying to get into a market either with a little bit more power at the price point or a little bit more bells and whistles features at the price point. Now, features are very important. If they're right for you, then they're worth spending money on. Uh, if they're not right for you, then they're not worth spending the money on because now you're, you're putting your money somewhere where you're not going to use it. Yes, sometimes the Eon 615 is the right choice and sometimes the ZLX 15P is the right choice. It really comes down to what you're looking for in a speaker. So uh, a lot of times uh, a good question would be, what's right for me? I use my speaker this way. I need it for DJing. I do 150 people. Uh, I do weddings specifically for, you know, uh, retro music and that sort of thing. So I'm not looking for uh, hard hip hop music with this type of sound to it. I mean, the question can be pretty full but it really helps with what type of speaker now if you just did djing and you were a specialty and you only did techno or house music that sort of thing you would need a specific type of speaker to really do a good job so uh, again uh it's one of those how are you going to use it so if you want to ask the question and let me know how you're going to use it that's going to be a good thing so new question from Gladiator 1972. Uh, he's making a comment to the fact that he's disappointed with his TS-318. So just got it. Uh, he's using it in a space that's 10 by 20. Uh, it didn't say feet or meters. I'm not sure on that. Uh, and he's you know not getting the response out of it that he's looking for. It really comes down to placement. 18 inch in that kind of space is really tough. Uh, I probably would have gone 15 inch first. Uh, it would have been a little easier to set up. Uh, you want to point towards the wall, so you want to be on the side of the wall, six to eight feet away from the wall, and point the speaker towards that wall, six to eight feet away from it. Uh, so you have some deflection of sound. Uh, hopefully that will keep it all in phase, and you'll get a much better bass response in that space. Uh, problem is when you're in a smaller room, uh, the bass doesn't have enough time to catch you, or basically decompress and fill that space. So it's pushing real hard against the wall opposite to it and by the time it bounces back it's now going to be slightly out of phase and canceling itself so it's really tough so normally i would face it towards a wall and about six feet away from that wall and give that a sound you know try it out that way and see how it's set up new question from dj mayday and it's in reference to the altic lansing uh lightning i'm assuming he's probably talking about that speaker specifically or maybe speakers in total in general i'm not 100 percent sure uh and the question is is it normal for the amp plate to get hot uh it's not staying warm it's it's kind of hot is exactly what he's saying um if it's hot enough to fry an egg on or it smells like it's burning no there's something wrong with it if it's hot like hot to the touch uh that particular speaker is a generates a lot of energy and if it's not playing it through the front uh, at full tilt uh, when you turn up the volume on it it definitely will get hot if you can fry an egg on it maybe it's too hot I'm not sure but definitely it does get hot ours is warm just idling here it's actually in the back corner there doing a little dance with the speaker lights that's how it is most time if it's playing if I'm demoing it for five ten minutes it does get hot 
So if it's uh, if you can fry an egg on it, maybe it's a little too hot. But uh, normally they do heat up, and that's kind of normal for the way that amp is. So there we go. By the way, if you're concerned about it, probably have a warranty if you bought from an authorized dealer. So you may want to contact them. All right. So we got a new question from uh, Barra Seven, and uh, this is in reference to he's looking for speakers to fill a space that's uh, going to hold about 90 people in it, and the ceilings are roughly eight feet tall. Um, now. For that, you probably 212 inch will do fine on stands. Uh, if you're using a controller or a mixer, you can certainly start off with uh, the Alto TS312, two of those. Uh, if you want to have speakers with a little bit more control in the back, let's say bass and treble controls because you're not going to be running it through all that kind of stuff, Electro Voice ZLX 12P. Uh, and if you're not going to be there to supervise it, and other people are going to be using this when you're not there. So uh, then you want to look at, let's say, the JBL Eon 612. Now, those are just because they're very hard to break. So people can abuse them and they won't get damaged. So there you go. That would be my recommendation for that. All right. Next question is from Ken and uh, it makes a comment on the live 1202 video. And uh, this is a good one, Ken. There a lot of people have viewed it. You're the first person to notice this. Uh, he asked me if there was a longer version. Turns out that the uh, somehow the uh, edited version that ended up getting posted on YouTube was the wrong one. It's uh, only four minutes long, and it should be, to be honest with you, 12 minutes long. And it's been up for a while. I just watched it from front to back, and I went, that's not what I did. So uh, I'm making a new one because, of course, I can't find the original one. So we're going to make a new video, a proper video, and hopefully it's just as popular as that short little four minute missing half of the content video. Thanks again, Ken, for noticing that. New question from, and I think it's, uh, he's trying to go with quick speed here. Uh, what's the DB rating on the ES15 to go? Uh, to be honest, I didn't put a meter in front of it, but I'm going to say it's no more than 80 dB. It's just a rechargeable loud speaker. Uh, it's fun. It's convenient. It's easy. If you're looking for something for the rec room or the backyard, it's going to be loud. It's not a DJ speaker by any means, but it is a fun speaker. So there you go. Hope that helps. A uh, question from uh, MM2018. Uh, have I had any returns yet uh, on the TS318 uh, subwoofer? So that's the Alto TS318 subwoofer or any problems? Uh, well, it's a new product and so far no problems. But I mean, it's just the beginning of its life. Alto tends to be pretty consistent with their products and their problems. And their subwoofers have definitely not been a problem. So uh, I'm going to say so far so good. Uh, we'll see how it is six months from now. New question uh, from the mix, and it happens to be on the Pro FX 16 V2. So I'm going to need a mixer. All right. So the question is, how do you use the tape in and out? Uh, I want to play music from my laptop uh, through the system and cannot find a level for the tape. Uh, yes. If you're using these, these are basically for sending a signal in and out of the actual unit. You can send a signal in that way, but you'll have virtually no control over it except maybe gain levels. So I would get away from using that particular, just because it's RCA's doesn't mean it's the right place to go. It does look right, but it's not. So I'm thinking that this is the cable you have at home right now, which is a 3.5 uh, to go in your laptop and you're using RCA plugs to plug in the mixer. Now you can do one of two things. Go to your local audio store, music store, and buy adapters like this, which are quarter inch to RCA. And where am I gonna put these guys? I wanna use two of them in my last two channels, let's say channel seven and eight, just like that. By doing that, I can now use my cable that I have and plug into here. And this is gonna give me some options. This is gonna bring me right down the line. Now I know you have a bigger mixer, but it's gonna bring me right down this line. I'm gonna have high, mids and lows controls. I'm gonna be able to move this off to my monitor if I want. Uh, it's also going to give me a balance control off of it, and it's all going to be controlled with this lever right here, and I'll be able to mute it out whenever I want just by pressing that button. All that because I went out and got two adapters. Now, if you just want to get a new cable, because uh, they're not that expensive anyways, you can get one that's two quarter inch and a 3.5. So just like the RCA cable you have right now, except these already have the quarter inch on the ends, and it has a 3.5 at the other end. Uh, so if you're looking for a good way to have some adjustments some controls that's really good again you'll have gain controls on it you'll be able to cut out the 
Uh, the low end off of it, if not, you can just let it play. Sorry, that one doesn't have that. My apologies. But you'll have all the other controls on it as well. So, either get the 3.5 stereo to two unbalanced quarter inch, or if you want to hang on to the cable you already have, go out and get yourself RCA to quarter inch. That'll do the job. Uh, this is better than this, but to be honest, it's RCA anyways, you won't tell the difference. Very small difference. So there we go. Uh, the mix, I hope that helps, and uh, let me know. All right, new question from Lewis, who's got the uh, ProRec 3200 Club. Now it's a line array speaker package that does pretty much everything you can think of on the back side of it. And he wants to know how to hook that up to some Mackie Thump 12As uh, because the back of the unit, I had to Google it to get exactly what it looked like. But uh, yeah, only has RCA outputs on it. You would think something with all those input options and all those, well, overall features would have something else besides just that. But only has RCA output. So if you do want to plug in Mackie's onto it uh, and not have to run through a mixer, you can go out and buy cables that are similar to this, which are RCA to XLR mail. You can do that, no problem. Uh, that's one way to get it done. That would probably be your straightforward. These cables usually don't come very long, so you will have to run longer. If you are gonna run them very far away, like more than 25 feet, I'd probably run your speaker into a small mixer so you can adjust the gain controls and then use a quarter inch or XLR balance cables out. So to make it simple and easy, you can go out and buy one of these guys, hook this up to the line out, this will, even though it's XLR 3 pin, it will just be an unbalanced connection, but that's okay. Uh, from here, you just run your 25 foot uh, XLR to XLR cables and plug into the back of the speakers, balance it all out, and you should be just fine. There we go for that one. Hope that helps, Lewis. Have fun with those speakers. All right, question from Anthony, and it has to do on the Behringer 1204 USB. Uh, his question is looking for making sure that the mixer itself is as clean as possible uh, because he's going to be using it for voiceovers. If you are going to use it for voiceovers, you probably want to buy an actual audio interface, not a, not a mixer with an audio interface built into it. Um, they're always good, but you know, uh, for the same price range, you can definitely get all kinds of audio interfaces out there. If you do need multiple channels and not just one for your, your voice, uh, then yes, it's okay, but remember, it's always gonna bring it down to two channels. It's as clean as the microphone in the room that you have it in. There's not that much background noise that's being generated off the actual unit. But again, I'd probably go out and get just an audio interface. The word interface or audio interface on mixers gets thrown around a lot. Uh, so you're, you know, you're better off with getting just an audio. So M-Audio makes a great one. There's lots of choices there from M-Audio. So have a look around, but again, uh, look for maybe just an audio interface. You'll spend the same amount of money and get a lot better product. All right, new question from Azarly, and it has to do with getting the Mackie Pro FX8 for a two-piece band. Uh, it may not sound like, oh, I need a lot of inputs, but he's making a good point here. He's, you know, first channel was going to be for guitar, second and third for vocals. Then he wanted to connect the drum kit. Now, the problem is you are going to run out of inputs, and you do need to have all XLR inputs for that drum kit microphone. Uh, so you make note that, you know, oh, you can use 7 and 8, and maybe can I use the ST return jacks? Um, no, you're going to need XLR, so you're going to need to get a bigger mixer. Take a head count of all the microphones you have. Make sure you got XLR plugs to plug into all of those. If you have an old mixer that can accommodate just the uh, the drum kit, uh, you by all means, if it has enough XLRs to hold the drum kit, use that. Then use the main outs of that and plug that into channel 7 and 8 on the new Mackie mixer that you're looking at. Uh, and then you can get away with it, no problem. But if you don't have an old mixer to use just for the drum kit, you're going to need to get a bigger Mackie mixer. Remember, they all if it's a microphone, it needs to go up on top where those XLRs are, and you'll get the job done. So I hope that helps. Let me know. So a question from Paul, and this has to do with the AS10 BLU from Gemini. It's a small portable speaker, and it's a question. How much does it weigh? Those little guys are only going to weigh about 12 pounds. I mean, they're easy to carry around, portable stuff, not very heavy, but very easy to use. So they're they're fun to have kicking around. Uh, 
don't expect the world from, but they're really good at what they do. And they only weigh about 12 pounds. New comment from Amir. Now, he's making a straightforward comment uh, that you cannot compare a JBL to an Alto. Uh, Alto is not at the level of JBL. Well, you know, you can say that about anything. You can say you can't compare a Honda Civic against a Mercedes because they're not at the same level. But uh, I did, and it's a choice. There's options and features on one, like I said in the videos. Uh, is JBL better than Alto? If you need a speaker, you don't have to babysit. A uh, speaker that, you know, uh, acoustically is a little bit more refined. One that has an app-driven background. All that kind of stuff. That's what makes the JBL uh, better than the Alto. When it comes to sound, that becomes a Coke and Pepsi option. So, I mean, it's not for me to tell you, oh, yes, this one sounds better than that one. I can tell you what's different about the two when it comes to sound. But at the end of the day, it's a personal choice. And the features are very, very important when it comes to making a choice on speakers like that. But you can't compare the two. There's nothing wrong with that. They sit on the same shelf. There's a button. You press them each one. And listen to them. There's no. It's there. All righty. Question from John. And it's in reference to the JBL Eon 615. And he's asking, uh, is it good for a live band setup? Absolutely. I mean, that's really what the app program on the back of it is really for. I mean, uh, a DJ can use it. Anybody can use it. But, of course, you know, with that much detail in the options built into that JBL, uh, for sure, live band would absolutely love using a speaker like that. Uh, you know, it's got all the settings. It's got a way to reproduce sound that most speakers don't have in that price range. Uh, so you'll enjoy using it, that's for sure. Nobody's ever upset about getting themselves a JBL. So definitely, live band, JBL Eon 615. If you're playing for 50 to 150 people, you might you're gonna need two of them. Uh, but definitely a good way to go. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We didn't get through all of them today, so there will be another video in a couple of days to wrap that up. Uh, and we'll just keep going every few days, trying to keep up on these questions. Um, but if you have a question or comment on this video or any other video, uh, make sure to leave it down below or leave it on the uh, video you're watching. Remember to always hit the bell button so this way when I actually do reply to the questions you'll be able to see that video pop up on your uh, on one of your playlist options and don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate that very much. If you like this video, if it helped you out, give me a thumbs up. I'd also appreciate that. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.